thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to you today about intraperitoneal chemotherapy for stage four gastric cancer. I'll start first by discussing the rationale for a catheter-based approach to intraperitoneal chemotherapy and compare this technique to other approaches for intraperitoneal treatment. I'll briefly discuss the clinical trial that's open and recruiting here at the National Cancer Institute for patients with gastric cancer and peritoneal carcinomatosis, and conclude with, by discussing briefly some potential future directions for this treatment approach. First, as most everybody in the audience is aware, there's a clinical need for improved treatment approaches for patients with gastric cancer and peritoneal carcinomatosis. Cytoreductive surgery and heated intraperitoneal chemotherapy are generally reserved for patients with low volume disease. Unfortunately, many patients will present with more extensive disease and therefore may not be eligible for cytoreductive surgery in high PEC trials. However, the hope and the goal is that some of these patients may become eligible for cytoreductive surgery and high PEC after undergoing initial intraperitoneal treatment. To so take a step back, why are we looking at intraperitoneal approaches to chemotherapy administration? Based on work that started about 50 years ago, we've seen that by giving a similar dose of a chemotherapy agent directly in the intraperitoneal cavity, we achieve much higher concentrations of that drug in the peritoneal cavity while minimizing the total body or systemic uptake of that chemotherapy drug, and therefore we minimize the toxicity or adverse effects of that chemotherapy. In this illustration here, this is a platinum-based agent, and we can see that the AUC, or area under the curve, is much, much higher in when the patient is receiving this chemotherapy agent directly into the peritoneal cavity, and yet the plasma or blood concentrations of that drug are about equal when comparing the intraperitoneal administration to intravenous administration. And this um, aspect has been expanded upon over the last several decades in order to improve the treatment of patients with peritoneal disease. When we look at catheter-based chemotherapy administration, it allows us to use chemotherapy drugs that don't require the heating that's part of HIPEC to improve their efficacy. And we can also use these medications that are, are cell cycle specific, meaning that these chemotherapy agents only work at certain points in the, in the process of cell division. When we use our, our known HIPEC agents, those tend to be agnostic to the cell cycle. And so it tends to affect all of the cancer cells, regardless of where they are in division. But some medications are more specific. This is a picture of one of the catheters that's produced by Bard. And so it's similar to an intravenous port placed in the chest. And then the catheter is placed within the, the peritoneal cavity. And the port itself, the reservoir, is underneath the skin, usually along the edge of the ribs. This allows patients to have the catheter in place and be able to shower, bathe, swim, and live with the catheter throughout their treatment until it's ultimately removed. When we look at different chemotherapeutic agents that are used for intraperitoneal uh, treatment, we look at different characteristics, including if they work better with, in, with heating or not, and also that characteristic of the area under the curve. And skipping all the way to the bottom, I'll focus mostly on paclitaxel for my discussion today. As we can see, the area under the curve ratio is 1,000, which is one of the highest of all of the different agents that have been used in intraperitoneal treatment. And that's one of the advantages of it. And it's not one that requires heat to really be more effective. So why does paclitaxel work this effectively? It is a high molecular weight, so it's a bulkier molecule and therefore less likely to be taken up by the bloodstream and uh, be exposed to other parts of the body. It's also hydrophobic, which helps keep that from happening uh, as well. 
The paclitaxel targets cells that are actively dividing. The effects of it are seen as early as six hours after being given and can last as long as 72 hours. It's really an ideal agent for bidirectional therapy, which I'll discuss more in detail in the following slides. And when compared to another taxane, docetaxel, it has deeper tissue penetration. And docetaxel, many people will be aware, is taxotere, which is a component of FLOT chemotherapy. So the rationale for bidirectional therapy is that we're treating these peritoneal nodules, both from the peritoneal side using the intraperitoneal chemotherapy, as well as from the bloodstream using the intravenous chemotherapy. And this is supported by the thought that intravenous chemotherapy diffuses into the peritoneal space as opposed to accumulating in the peritoneal nodules themselves. And this is facilitated by the fact that these tumor nodules tend to have an increased amount of blood vessels compared to normal tissues. However, by giving intraperitoneal chemotherapy at the same time, we take away that diffusion gradient. So that way, these tumor nodules are, are being exposed to paclitaxel on both sides. Also, by giving intraperitoneal treatment, it helps collapse the blood vessels themselves. And this can lead to less oxygen for the tumor nodules and therefore treat those outer layers of the tumor nodules that really need that oxygen to survive and to continue to divide. Some of the advantages of catheter-based chemotherapy include that it does not require going to the operating room to receive the chemotherapy into the intraperitoneal cavity. And it can also be given at the same time, even on the same day, as intravenous chemotherapy. In contrast, laparoscopy-based approaches like PIPAC or laparoscopic HIPEC um, are better able to control where the uh, chemotherapy drug is reaching within the peritoneal cavity, whereas we depend on where the catheter is and patient positioning to distribute the chemotherapy when it's going through the catheter. And at laparoscopy, we can increase the efficacy of these chemotherapy drugs by adding heat to them. Some of the disadvantages of the catheter-based therapy are that we can't control and, and really um, uh, direct where the chemotherapy drug is going. Uh, and there, there is a, a potential for catheter-related complications, whether it's infection or sometimes it can irritate the lining of the intestine. The laparoscopy-based, again, does require going to the operating room each time the intraperitoneal chemotherapy is given. And because of that, the timing is often offset with intravenous chemotherapy, so there's at least a week between the last intravenous chemotherapy and intraperitoneal chemotherapy, and one more week until intravenous chemotherapy can be given again. Looking at gastric cancer and experiences that other groups have reported in bidirectional therapy, um, several groups in Asia have reported patient series where they've been given intravenous and intraperitoneal paclitaxel, as well as S1. S1 is similar to capecitabine, which is a prodrug of 5-fluorouracil which is, again, a component used in FLOT chemotherapy. S1 is not available in the United States, so instead, capecitabine is the chemotherapy agent that we use that's similar to it. And through these different trials, uh, I've highlighted the doses of the paclitaxel that we're using here at the National Cancer Institute for our trial. We see that at various concentrations, by providing patients with this bidirectional chemotherapy, Many patients are converted over to negative cytology when they had positive cytology before treatment. And some patients experience a partial or even complete response of their primary tumor itself. And in the last column, we see that the overall survival is arguably much better than the expected median overall survival for these patients otherwise. And so this led us to our clinical question of, can we replicate the successes reported in these previous studies out of Asia? With gastric cancer, 
I think that's well recognized that Eastern and Western populations have slightly different phenotypes or different presentations of gastric cancer. And one major initiative in gastric cancer treatment is making sure that what we're seeing is effective in one population is also effective in the other. And that was the rationale for this trial. The objectives of it are to evaluate this bi-directional therapy approach and to follow and assess patients' progression-free survival after treatment and also evaluate the ability to use this approach to reduce the peritoneal disease burden, downstage patients, and ideally allow more patients to be eligible for subsequent treatment of cytoreductive surgery and hybrid. The design is that the patients come in and have an initial laparoscopy. That laparoscopy we use to determine which of our two trials between bidirectional therapy or cytoreductive surgery and HIPAP the patient is uh, eligible for. Patients who have a higher disease burden, so a parent's neocarcinomatosis index score of over 10, would then sign on to the trial and undergo a second laparoscopy, at which time an intraperitoneal catheter is placed. They undergo three cycles of intraperitoneal and intravenous paclitaxel, as well as oral capecitabine. After three cycles, the laparoscopy is done again to assess the response. So patients who are stable or responding will undergo three additional cycles. And a final laparoscopy following those three cycles to reassess the um, stage of disease at that point. Patients who have a tremendous response to those first three cycles may come off treatment and then move on to cytoreductive surgery and HIPEC at that point, instead of continuing with three additional cycles of bidirectional therapy. And patients who have progressive disease during this time would then come off study. This is a calendar of the treatment where it's three three-week cycles and up to six three-week cycles. The intraperitoneal and intravenous paclitaxel are given on day one, and the patient then takes 14 days of capecitabine, and then they have a week off until day one of, of, the, of week four, for example. Inclusion and exclusion criteria for the study. For inclusion criteria, patients need to be at least 18 years of age, and have pathologic confirmation of a gastroesophageal junction or uh, gastric adenocarcinoma, and a ECOG performance status of less than or equal to one. Exclusion criteria include extra abdominal disease, allergy to the chemotherapeutic agents on the trial, prior intraperitoneal therapy, and also a severe or significant existing peripheral neuropathy which of course can happen with previous therapy from oxaliplatin or docetaxel. For patients or family members or anybody who's interested in learning more uh, about the trial, or if somebody would uh, like to be referred to be screened for eligibility for the trial, there's contact information for Kathleen Hanna, who's our research nurse, who's um, uh, working on the trial with the, the principal investigator, Dr. Jeremy Davis. And just to conclude, uh, to briefly mention some future directions of this uh, treatment approach. In the future, we will want to study how NAB paclitaxel or albumin bound paclitaxel, a trade name of Braxine, compares to plain paclitaxel. The NAB paclitaxel is not as hydrophobic, um, and so it may have increased uptake into the tumor nodules compared to plain paclitaxel but that remains to be seen. We also are always looking to identify other combinations of intraperitoneal, intravenous, or oral chemotherapy agents to find the optimal combination for either specific patients based on their uh, genetic profile of their cancer or gastric cancer patients in general. And right now, I, we're, I would say in the early stages of evaluating this catheter-based chemotherapy treatment. But in other cancers like ovarian cancer, uh, other groups have explored uh, early post-operative intraperitoneal chemotherapy that's given in the first few days following a cytoreductive surgery with or without HIPEC, or adjuvant chemotherapy, which is given uh, several weeks after a cytoreductive surgery 
once patients have recovered in order to add intraperitoneal treatment when the disease burden is as low as possible. And so I just wanted to thank uh, everybody once again for the opportunity to discuss uh, these intraperitoneal catheter-based chemotherapy approaches for gastric cancer. And I look forward to our live question and answer session.